Previous analytical techniques like CNMR work on the basis that organic compounds interact with very specific energies, which correspond to specific frequencies slash wavelengths. Infrared radiation is also able to be absorbed by organic molecules and cause these particular molecular vibrations. So in IR spectroscopy, we have this sample but we don't know what the molecule is. So we irradiate this sample with infrared light and it interacts in some way with the sample. Some of this light will interact with the sample and some will pass through to the detector and this gives us information about the structure of the molecule. So what does IR do to the organic molecules? Molecules are always moving in the form of vibrations of bending and stretching and even twisting. For example, the covalent bonds between diatomic molecules, these can stretch and contract, a bit like a spring connected between two spheres. These vibrations can be symmetrical in which they kind of move in unison or they can move asymmetrically in more of an alternating stretching movement. In polyatomic molecules, you can also have the bending of the covalent bonds in this sort of motion. They can also be symmetrical or asymmetrical types of bending. Now these vibrations occur when very particular wavelengths of infrared light is absorbed and depends on the type of functional group present in the compound. So we're talking about things like bond length, bond strength, size of atoms and even intermolecular bonds as these can influence the strength of your covalent bonds. Therefore, we can get a spectrum for each organic compound. So what does this spectrum look like? The x-axis represents the wave number of infrared given in 1 over centimeters. It's the range of the spectrum that corresponds from here to here. So when a sample is placed in an IR spectrometer, we irradiate it with all the different wavelengths of infrared light and some of these get absorbed by the sample with these numbers corresponding to the different wavelengths. The y-axis is a percentage transmittance that reaches the detector. So in other words, this wave number, which looks like 3800, means that this wave, or this particular wavelength, was not absorbed by the sample and most went straight to the detector, well, in relation to how much IR you applied. And whatever is going on at this particular wave number, none is going through and not making it into the detector and it's all being absorbed. This means there's a particular functional group in this sample that is absorbing that particular wavelength of IR light. This area on the spectrum that's above a wave number of 1500 is known as a diagnostic region and provides pretty good information about the functional groups in the sample. So the right of this region is known as the fingerprint region and is unique to each organic compound. This can be used to confirm the identity of unknown compounds by comparing its spectra to known standards. But that's beyond the scope of this course, so we'll focus on the diagnostic part. Now the beauty is that we know the particular wave number that is absorbed by various functional groups. For example, we know that the hydroxyl functional group will absorb in a range of 3000 to 3500. This is known as the OH stretch and according to our spectrum, hardly any of it is making it back to the detector. So this gives us the information that compound contains a hydroxyl functional group. This represents a carbonyl stretch with a range of 1670 to about 1780. Once again, hardly any of it is making its way to the detector, so we also know the sample contains a carbonyl functional group. The combination of these two peaks suggests we're dealing with a carboxylic acid. Also, this peak at 1200 is common to most carboxylic acids.